Guys, today we are going to talk about a topic which is not only relevant to your academics, but it would be very, very useful if you're working in any organization at any position. Hi, I am the Common Specialist. Welcome to my channel where you'll find content relating to various academic qualifications and professional certification, including life-changing business hacks. Today's topic is related to a core area of statistics, but it is very relevant for decision making. So before I explain today's topic, let me give you an example which will make you understand how relevant and important today's topic is. Assume you're working in a company and your boss comes one day and tells you, hey Stafford, I'm going on vacations. I want you to take over the department. You being the production manager and the boss is telling you like next month, I need a production of 1 million units. How much money do you need? Now let me tell you, guesswork will not help if you demand a lot of money that is not good because the boss will think that you are keeping a slack if you demand too less money you will not be able to deliver the production orders so guesswork will not do and let me tell you when your boss is asking you that means you have the liberty to ask for an amount a budget to produce x amount of units what you're going to do is you're going to use a statistical concept which we call regression why do we have regression we use regression for forecasting purposes for estimation obviously no estimation is precise but at least we can come up with realistic figures so let's look at a practical problem now which helps us to understand how regression work and its application what i've given here is uh, some data from january to may uh, productions are given in units in January, we produced 10 units, in February 15, and in May 30 units, and these are their corresponding cost. Which means in January, when we manufactured 10 units, our total production cost was 40,000. There are three zeros here. I've eliminated three zeros. In February, when we made 15 units, the total cost was 50. And likewise, in May, the total cost was 80,000. Now, what if your boss is asking you, next month, that is the month of June, they intend to make 18 units. So if the company intends to make 18 units, you are the production manager, you have to ask for a budget. In order to make 18 units, this is the amount I need. So how are you going to do that? Very simple. Use the formula for regression. Now please understand, whenever you are asked for forecasting, estimation, you cannot forecast and estimate in the air. You got to have some historical data. So if my boss is asking me for a budget for producing 18 units, I need to understand what are my previous figures. So I'll get the data from the accounting records and this is what it gives me. For the last one, two, three, four, five months, I have the number of units produced and the corresponding cost. Using this, I'll be able to estimate how much it will take to make 18 units. Now, step by step, I'm going to explain you how to go about estimation now let's see how regression works first of all when you have units and total cost you can call this units x and total cost as y and you have to calculate total cost for 18 units okay that means y is to be calculated you need to calculate total cost total cost is y so you have to calculate total cost for 18 units. What to do? You just need to create three more columns. You already have here X, you have Y. You should have a column of X square, Y square, and X multiplied by Y, which will be X into Y. So now you need to work this very simple x is 10 x square will be 10 into 10 that will give you 100 y is 40 so y square will be 40 into 40 is 1600 x is 10 y is 40 so this says x multiplied by y so 10 into 40 will give you 400 likewise i'm going to fill all these columns to save your time i'm doing it very quickly 
your sigma sigma stands for summation means total sigma x square you need this you need sigma y square when you total this column and sigma xy you also need the total of sigma y you also need the total of x column which is sigma x so if i do this 15 into 50 that will be xy 15 square will be x square 50 square will be y square so i'm just uh, putting the data here so i've worked all these columns for you i got the x square column which is 10 into 10 is 100 15 into 15 is 25 so i work this out i total them vertically likewise y square y is 40 40 into 40 is 1600 50 into 50 is 2500 i worked all this column added this so this is y sigma y square i have 19 likewise i have x into y this is x this is y x into y will give me this 15 into 50 will give me this i total this up so once i have all the totals of all these columns now i'm going to apply the regression formula but before applying regression formula there are some prerequisites because this is your actual regression formula now for using regression formula we need to calculate a and the value of b so first we calculate b now the formula for b i have given here to save time this is how b is calculated b is equal to n into sigma xy now let me tell you n is the number of observation count them 1 2 3 4 5 so n is the number of observation so instead of n i am putting 5 then it says sigma xy sigma xy is this summation of this so 5 into 6500 minus sigma x the total of sigma x is 100 so i'm going to put 100 here multiply by sigma x into sigma y means sigma x multiplied by sigma y sigma y is 300 so 100 into 300 whole thing divide by again n n is the number of observation 1 2 3 4 5 observation 5 values we have so again 5 into sigma x squared this is sigma x squared 2250 5 into 2250 minus sigma x sigma x is 100 so i'm putting it 100 here and this is sigma x the whole square so when i solve all this you'll get the value of b which comes to 2 so b is coming to 2 now once we have b we also need to calculate A. And let me tell you, I am going to explain you what is meant by B and what is meant by A. All right. So at the moment, what we need is the value for A. So I've given you the formula for A. A is equal to sigma x, sigma y upon n. So A is equal to sigma y. Sigma y is 300 here. So A is equal to sigma y, which is 300, divided by n. n is the number of observation, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. As many values you have, that would be your n, which is 5. Minus b, b which we already calculated is 2, into sigma x, which is already calculated as 100, divided by n, which is again 5. So when you solve all this, you'll get the value of A, which comes to 20. So guys, now that we have the value for A and B, we are all good and set to use the wonderful and magical equation of regression. The equation of regression is like this. Y is equal to A plus BX, which I've given here. Now, remember Y is your total cost. Remember, total cost is Y. So Y says total cost. We are trying to find total cost okay so total cost is equal to a a we just calculated as 20 b we calculated here as 2 into x now this becomes a magical equation why i'm calling this a magical equation because you can put any amount for x and that will give you the value for y for example in our situation we are supposed to calculate val product, total production cost for 18. Remember, y is the total cost. So we are trying to find the total cost, which is y, 
is equal to 20 plus 2 into how many units? This is the amount. You just insert this as x, which is 18. So your y will be 20, 18 to the 36. So your y will be 56. Now remember, this total cost is in thousand, so it will be 56,000. In other words, if the company intends to make 18 units, they should have a budget for total cost for 56,000. One thing you need to understand, in order to use regression, you need to have past data, historical records. Now we have some historical records here for the same company. And one technical thing you need to understand, we were asked to calculate total cost for 18 units. Now if you look at our past records, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Now 18 is somewhere in between. So if you are trying to forecast and estimate total cost for an amount which is in between your past records, it is known as interpolation. And when you interpolate means you try to estimate total cost for a number of units which is within this range, the final answer is very much realistic. But what if you are asked to calculate total cost not for 18 but 40 units? Now, if you look at your past records, does not have anything for 40. 40 is beyond the range. So we call it extrapolation. Now, when you're doing extrapolation, you got to be very careful. Why? Because you need to understand when we talk about total cost, total cost includes fixed cost and variable cost and their behavior is different. I have posted a video on cost behavior. Uh, you can have a look at uh, that video whenever you get time. So that will make you understand that as activity increases, as production increases, all cost does not increase in the same proportion. It's the variable cost will increase in the same proportion. Fixed cost may remain same for a certain while, but it may not remain fixed forever. So we need to understand what is the relevant range. Relevant range means a range beyond which the fixed cost may also increase. So you need to be careful when you are forecasting, when you are estimating, either you are interpolating means you are finding a value which is within the given range or it is outside the range. Outside the range estimation will not be very realistic and accurate. In companies, what we, another point you need to understand that practically when we are estimating in companies, we are applying this in our workplace and if you are forecasting, please understand that in forecasting you also have to incorporate the effect of inflation and any other economic factor. So guys, if you have any question relating to regression and estimation, feel free to leave a comment. I will respond to you as usual. If you're not yet subscribed to my channel, please subscribe to my channel. Press the bell notification button. And if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to share this video with your dear and near ones so that others can also benefit. Thank you so very much for your precious time.